Yeah, <laughs> it's me once again, Jan Dani. Uh, in your favorite show, of course, New York Real Life. Uh, the, please don't mind me. It's, the, the thing is that, you know, I'm always smiling and I was just having a conversation with my wife about the stock market that seems to be like, like really, really, really hot. But uh, unfortunately, you know, um, this is not about good news. Not about bad news either, but it's also not about good news. Um, I got the latest video from uh, Dr. Buttar, who's a person that I, I have high esteem for. Um, it's one of the first doctors that came out and spoke out against what's going on in our society, uh, at least in, throughout the world, but basically here in the United States, about the coronavirus and the things that we're doing that is hampering our health. And it's gonna hamper a lot of other things, but I'm gonna let him tell you that. So uh, I hope all of y'all are doing good, uh, especially health-wise. I'm doing pretty well. I can't complain. I praise God. Um, the God of my own understanding, and I'm sure you praise yours according to your understanding that he's given us at least one more day where we can appreciate his goodness and, and this beautiful earth that he has made for all of us to enjoy. The problem with that is that if, if, we, don't have, if we don't have freedom to enjoy the beautiful things that nature has to offer, like skydiving, for example, <laughs> right? Uh, skiing, swimming, playing baseball in the summer, right? Playing football in the winter. And um, it's sad. It's sad when we don't have the freedom that we should have to enjoy some of these activities and some of the goodness that God has blessed us with. But um, listen, <laughs> I'm not trying to start politicking now, but I've been thinking about some of the things that this radical socialist liberals and I don't really think even they, they even liberal because they're not, they left us. I'm a liberal, I'm a conservative liberal and proud of it. I am not too much to the, to the left, nor too much to the right. I like to stay somewhere down the middle and I feel very comfortable in that position. There's some good things about conservatism and there's some good things about liberalism. But I don't recall anything good about the leftist ideology. And this is what I want people to understand. This is what I want people to understand. And I'm gonna get into that a little more later on at another show. But right now we're talking about the coronavirus because basically what's going on today with um, George Floyd's death is that, and, and le let me emphasize, this is just my own personal opinion is because the government wants you to take the, your eyes off the ball, basically. That's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. Because right now, as we speak, they passing state law. Right now, as we speak, they passing state law that are against our constitution. That's right. They taking some of our freedoms away. Some of our God given freedoms away. But at the same time, they're trying to tell you that it's okay if we release a couple of criminals into the 
in, in, into our community. Because believe me when I tell you, they're not going to your community, to their community. They, they go into our community. They go into the boogie down Bronx. They go into Spanish Harlem, like in my case. Maybe in some of you guys' case, they go into, in Florida, they're probably going into the Miami area where things are not as good as some other areas of, of Miami. Same thing with California. You know, I'm sure that these criminals are not going to hang out in Rodeo Drive, right? Or in Beverly Hills. Believe me, they not. They really not. If these people get caught and they get released. And this is happening in so-called, quote unquote, democratic states, democratic cities, rather. Like LA, New York, Chicago, Detroit, Las Vegas. You see where I'm coming from? Now I understand, but listen, don't get me wrong, it's bad. It's bad when a cop, when a police officer, they're supposed to uphold the law. They have sworn an oath to protect his community to the best of his ability. To turn around and kill in cold blood a young black man. But what is mind boggling to me is that he did it right in front of a camera. Because I just want you people to use a little bit of some objectivity here. A little bit of a critical thinking here. Again, I'll emphasize, I'm not saying that George Floyd, you know, was not killed. I'm not saying that he's not there. What I'm saying is under the circumstances that it happened. We're talking about a police officer and his victim, in this case, George Floyd, that worked together. The police officer, Michael Chauvin, worked as a security guard. He moonlighted as a security guard also at night where George Floyd was also a security guard. And they didn't work for two days, three days, a week or two. They worked for almost a whole year. So to me, things like that, it's like, what a coincidence? No, to me, it's mind boggling. The George didn't turn around in any time in that video and say, yo, listen, Michael, it's me. It's me, George. What's even more mind boggling to me, and, you know, and I need you guys to understand my point is that this guy, this Michael Chauvin, had his knee on his neck for eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes while a young lady with a uh, YouTube, I mean, with a video, with a phone, was recording the whole incident. But I'm gonna, I have a lot more to say about that later on. But I'm just gonna ask one more question about this situation here. One more question. When EMT comes, and this is protocol all throughout the country, when EMT comes, they come ready to save a life. They come with their oxygen, they come with their morphine to make the pain less, they come with their adrenaline, their shot of adrenaline, just see if that's what they need to revive. They did not do any kind of Effort. They didn't make no effort whatsoever to revive this man right there on the spot. So matter of a fact, when EMT comes, the police officer is supposed to back up. He's supposed to back the F up and let the EMT do some work. But the man even took his paws while his knee. Are you kidding me? He took his paws while his knee was still on his neck. 
Listen, if that doesn't give you pause to think there's something funny here, I don't know what to say about you. Not only that, this is the first time in my 56 plus years that I see EMT with a bulletproof vest. You guys didn't notice that? I'm gonna I'm gonna play the video in a minute. Check it out. Check it's it out. About to walk over to the main. That man right there that you can see, that pull it, that that guy in the top of the screen, that's about to walk over to the main. He gets out the way. Just look at this. This man who's touching him. All right. Not the officer. A man with the, with the watch on right there. I want y'all to pay attention to something to him. He has a bulletproof vest on. All right. He has an officer's uniform on. No one paid attention to that when the ambulance pulled in. Not one EMT got about the vehicle. But there's no medical equipment there whatsoever. That there were cops who jumped out of the back of that ambulance. And picked up that man and put him in there. So they didn't even give him medical attention. And those were not the EMTs. When they show him, look at that. Those are police officers. Those armed police officers are taking that man away. There is no EMT on the scene. There is this. It's like it's a sham. They got an ambulance and put My police on. Isn't it? It really is mind-boggling. Look, I'm going to leave it at that for now. And we're going to go straight into Dr. Butard's video and see what does he has to say about the coronavirus because this is one of my main concerns. And it concerns me because right now they're passing laws throughout the states. They're passing law that infringes infringes in, into your rights as a citizen, your rights as a human being. And that's why they're doing it locally. On my last video, I, I, I made a, a comment about my wife having a conversation with the neighbor. And the neighbor told her that as they were having a, a conversation about what could be mandatory, what might not be mandatory. And, and I was shy. I, I, it was not part of my conversation. But I overheard the lady tell my wife that she went to the doctor. She had an appointment, went to the doctor. And when she got to her appointment, they told her that they were sorry, but that the clinic had adapted new guidelines and new policies. And one of the policies were that she had to take the coronavirus test. The COVID-19 test. That she had to. And if she didn't, they couldn't take care of her. What? Crazy, right? Dr. Buttar has a little, little more to say about that. Let's check him out. I think that the biggest issue that I want to make sure that the world understands is the predictive nature of what has been stated as back as far back as 2017 that there was going to be this pandemic that there's no way that somebody could have predicted that unless they had some inside knowledge of a release of some type of a pathogenic pandemic potential chimeric derivative type pathogen there's no way you can predict that. If you can't predict the market tomorrow or the next day, you can't predict the lottery numbers a week out. How can you predict if there's going to be a pandemic? And those people that say that they're models and that are predictive models, believe me, if we could predict stuff like that, then the world would be a much, much better place for all of humanity. But the answer is you can't make those type of predictions. And now they've got the second wave of COVID-19 that they're predicting. And I want to make sure that the world understands what is really getting ready to happen, because as people are allowed to come back into society, their immune systems are already going to have been suppressed because of the wearing of the mask, which is going to increase cortisol levels. Increase it's cortisol going to levels is going to put people into a pseudo hypoxic state. They're having to suck oxygen through a mask. It drives the cortisol levels up, which then creates a sympathetic mimetic drive. It suppresses the lymphocyte subpopulation, decreases the immune system, 
and renders an individual more susceptible to any type of pathogen, whether it be bacteria, virus, spirochete, mycoplasma, yeast, parasite, whatever. So that's the first component. When people start coming back into society, their immune systems are going to be more vulnerable. Plus the fact that they've been stressed out emotionally, financially, psychologically, staying at home, coming back out, their, their bodies are going to be under duress, under stress, and so they're going to be more susceptible to any pathogen. So the face mask agenda seems to be, if, if, you're, if you look at it from just a safety standpoint, it's highly suspect. If you look at it from a scientific perspective, it's the agenda is nefarious. The use of a face mask is designed to protect not the doctor or the nurse, but the patient. So that when a surgeon is operating and doing a bypass surgery or a herniography or a joint replacement, that if the surgeon sneezes or coughs or drools or spits or whatever, you don't want to get the surgical field contaminated. You want to maintain that sterile field. When people in the Far East, for example, wear a mask, they're wearing a mask so out of courtesy for other people so that if they're sick, they're not going to get somebody else sick. That's the reason people wear masks. Now, this mandate of wearing a mask, if you notice during the press conferences with the president, the president's never worn a face mask. So the first thing about a face mask is that we already talked about it's suppressing the immune system because you're driving the person into a hypoxic state. There have been multiple studies that have been done on this where they've actually studied surgeons and seen the level of oxygenation and especially on a chronic basis. Um, Dr. Blaylock, Russell Blaylock put out a great paper that summarized many of those research points. So we know that that happens. We know it suppresses the immune system because of that uh, sympathetomimetic drive that we initiate because we're having to suck oxygen through the face mask. On top of that, we breathe out carbon dioxide. But when you've got a mask on, you're actually creating a decrease you're creating actually an increase in respiratory drive because you get more carbon dioxide coming back from the face mask. Now, the face mask also creates other types of issues because you've got, you've got you know, irritating your face and sweating and all the stuff. So you're always fiddling around with your, with your face. And then the last point about the face, and there's a lot of points we can make about the face mask, but the last and most idiotic aspect of this is that it's like building a chain link fence to prevent a fly from getting into your house or a split rail fence to keep mice out. The viral particles that we're trying to keep out of our bodies are so much smaller than the smallest pore of these masks. Now, there's also uh, another thought process that this entire thing that's being blamed on COVID-19 is actually the real pathology that people are experiencing, a pathology that is actually from a secondary to a histotoxic hypoxic injury, which has nothing to do with the virus, is to do with contamination from combustion of fossil fuels, from the incinerator burnoffs, from the chemtrails, from all the different components in the quality of the air. So we had that present in Wuhan because we know that the level of air there was extremely, extremely poor as far as back as 2017, 2016, CNN and BBC covered the air quality issue in Wuhan. And it was uh, basically garnered an international attention because of the quality of the air. On top of that, Iran, Italy, and New York have all the same issues. So if this is a histotoxic, hypoxic injury, then when you're wearing a face mask, and let me just make sure for the audience, the doctors here obviously know what that means, but histo meaning cell, toxic meaning toxicity. So on the cellular level, the toxicity that's resulting in a hypoxic injury, which is decrease in oxygen. So many of the doctors that have been censored that are in the trenches have explained that this does not present like a viral injury. People are turning blue. It looks like an altitude type sickness. It looks like a hypoxic injury. Well, that's exactly what this histotoxic um, hypoxic injury would do. And so if that's the case, when you're wearing a face mask, there are various plastics in there. And as we continue to breathe back and forth, the humidity starts to cause that propylene, uh, whatever the, the material is, I think it's propylene glycol or some, some type of a plastic, it starts to break down. And now you're ingesting or inhaling many of these chemicals that are organophosphates or that, that may have these plastic components in there. We, I don't even know all the different components in there, but they're inhaling that, which is going to further exacerbate a histotoxic hypoxic injury. In regards to the, uh, to the, to the mask, I got something here for you guys. See it? Mask protection efficiency. And I'm going to start with the N95. 
The N95, when it comes to pollen, 100% good. The 100% protection from pollen. 100% protection from dust. 100% protection from bacteria. And 95% from viruses. Now the surgical mask. Pollen, dust, and bacteria, 80%. Virus, 95%. Now, this is every other mask. The type that you use the most, you know, out, out there. This is the bottom, the bottom list. The active carbon type. Bacteria, dust, and pollen, 50%. Virus, just 10%. See that? Cloth mask, which is also what most of the guys, at least in my community, in my city, are using a good 90% of them because they need to be in style. You got the Nike type, you know, you got the, the <laughs> I mean, Gucci and and all of those, those name brand joints, right? Anyway, the cloth mask, pollen, dust, and bacteria, 50%. Huh, pretty good, right? But for the virus, is zero. A big, fat zero. No protection whatsoever. And the sponge mask, against pollen, dust, bacteria, or virus. Zero, zero percent, no good at all. So I guess if you're not using an N95 mask, might as well don't wear anything at all. Because that's about the only thing that can actually protect you from a virus according to the latest data. Now, to the dangerous part. Check it out. Hypercapnia. The main symptoms of hypercapnia, which is basically carbon dioxide Toxicity, 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 toxicity. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. <laughs> Woo -wee. I'm gonna try it again. Should I try it again? Toxicity. All right, that sounds a little better, right? Now, some of the problems with these masks that we we are using is that we are breathing our own carbon dioxide. Inhale, and then we exhale. We inhale, and then we exhale. And everything that we exhaling, which is carbon dioxide toxicity, well, is also what we inhaling. Now, when it comes to the visual, if you're driving, for example, it dims your sight. To the central nervous system, it causes, it could cause drowsiness, mild narcosis, dizziness, confusion, headache, and up to unconsciousness. The skin, you start sweating profusely. From, the, from a respiratory point of view, Shortness of breath. Wow. You get twitches on your muscles from a muscular point of view. And your heart. It overworks your heart because you're not getting the right amount of oxygen into your lungs 
and then into your brain and then into your bloodstream and then it affects the heart and your heart can either have a heart attack, arrhythmia and a um, bunch of other problems. Here it is. I'm going to leave a link on the video below for you guys to um, get to know the latest when it comes to the um, coronavirus and the use of the mask and how problematic, you know, the use of the mask is. Now, listen, I want, I want, I want to fill you in, in some of the things that's been going on. If you allow me to. Now, I don't know how many of you guys know that a lot of the things that were not, what, what can I say, released. Earlier in the year, this has been released now. And the, this list that I have here is the list of people that lie, lie their asses off to you, to me, and they use their number one tool, the media, the mainstream media. These guys are unbelievable. James Comey, Andrew McKay, Bruce Orr, James Baker, Peter Straw, Loretta Lynch, Sally Yates, John Brennan, James Clapper, Lisa Page, Rod Rosenstein, that was just recently deposed by the United States Senate. But we are so busy. The mainstream media is so busy. You see how these people play the little games? With the death of George Floyd, that they haven't said not a word, not a peep about this in the mainstream media. They're actually protecting these people. Can it get any worse? Are you kidding me? And according to what Dr. Bittar just spoke, I want you to know that there's an organization called AI, Artificial Intelligence Organization, Prose. It's a Prose uh, lawsuit. No, it's not a criminal indictment. It's not a criminal because we don't have the power to indict someone criminally. A district attorney's office does. But what an organization can do, like this organization that receives funding from private sources, and from public sometimes, but basically from private sources to fight for your freedoms, my freedoms, and to sue these people that are doing horrendous things to the atmosphere, to our world, and to you and I as a whole. And I commend them for the, for the awesome job that they're doing. The founder of this organization is Cyrus A. Parsa. And he signed, or actually, he filed a lawsuit with the United States District Court of Southern District of California against the following, against the following organizations and I'm going to show you, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to mention the plaintiffs first, not the defendant, the plaintiffs. 
Here it is, by the way. I will leave a link below so this way you can seek and research for yourself and you can confirm that what I'm saying is legit. But here we go. The Artificial Intelligence Organizations Inc. Founder Cyrus A. Parsa plus victims of persecution, victims of rape, victims of torture, Men and women that have been held in concentration camps. Sex, human, and organ trafficking throughout the world. Organ harvesting in China, Hong Kong, America, and around the world. But not limited to democracy activist Falun Dafa practitioner. Christians, Tibetans, judges, lawyers, journalists. They have been tortured and killed in China. John Doe, number one and unlimited. There's a lot of John Doe's. They have come forward. They are going to be used as witnesses to the following charges. Against who? These are the defendants now. Google, LLC, Facebook, DeepMind, Alphabet, Inc., Neuralink, Tesla, Inc., Larry Page, Sergey Brin, Sundar Pachi, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Saizan, PR, Newswire, and 29 John Doe's. Now I need to emphasize that when they when they say 29 John Doe's because they still they still either investigating them or they're trying to turn them against the big dogs. So they don't want to put their name out there in front street. And what are the charges? The charges are as follows. Misuse of artificial intelligence, cybergenics, robotics, biometric, bioengineering, 5G technology, quantum computer technology, endangering the human race with the misuse of artificial intelligence, technology, transfer of artificial weapons, technology to China, my God, complicit in genocide in China, Violation of Article 1, violation of Article 2, violation of Article 3 of the Geneva Convention. And believe me, it's a lot more. The paper can, it's like 50 pages of paper. I will leave a link below. So this way you can research it yourself and confirm everything I'm saying. Now the following are the charges against the names that I mentioned earlier. James Comey could face. Now, I must emphasize, could face three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government, four counts of obstruction of justice, six counts of perjury, four counts of falsifying government documents. Andrew McKay could, could be uh, charged with the following. Three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government. Two counts of perjury. Three counts of lying to Congress. One count of falsifying government documents. And Bruce Orr, three counts of conspiracy. James Baker, charges are unknown. Peter Strzok, three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government. Loretta Lynch could be charged with three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government and three counts of lying to Congress. Sally Yates could be charged with three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government and three counts of obstruction of justice. John Brennan could face the following charges. Three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government, three counts of obstruction of justice, two counts of lying to investigators, one count of conspiracy to commit treason, 
three counts of lying to Congress. Boy, John Brennan, you got a big, 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 big case coming to you, boy. James Clapper could also face the following charges. Three counts of conspiracy to overthrow the government. Three counts to, conspir uh, to obstruction of justice. Three counts of perjury. Ro Rosenstein, Rosenstein. Five various charges that are unknown at the moment because he might turn rat against some. So then they're, they're not going to put it out there yet. But Susan Rice could be charged with illegal use of government systems, three counts of perjury, and one count of obstruction of justice. Note, these charges are subject to change as most of these people are still subject to another grand jury investigation. So counts may be either changed, updated, and other counts may be also added. Now, I want to emphasize that I cannot confirm these charges 100%. But based on my investigation, based on my research, they pretty lined up to some of the things that I have come across with in regards to each and every one of these people here. That's why it took me a while to bring this up. Because I had to research it. Just to make sure that... And everything is obviously starting to take place. Now, the problem is that you're not going to hear this in the mainstream media. You're not going to hear it in ABC or NBC. And definitely not CNN. You're just not. You know, these people carry water... For these I don't know what to call them man Honestly I just don't know what to call them Because my understanding is that One of them already got caught Charged Found guilty Was convicted Sentenced To death Oh yeah And you know him And I know him He didn't die of cancer, like they said. As a matter of fact, if you saw his coffin, his coffin was draped with an American flag. And you notice the American flag was wrinkled. They do that only to traitors. I'm not going to mention his name. It's just not worth it. It's not worth it. But I will say this, though. Some of the so-called dignitaries that were at the church paying their respect, like Obama, Miss Clinton, Bill Clinton, and one guy in particular, Jeff Bush. <laughs> Did you see his face when he opened up the program for the church and a piece of paper fell off? Or was it him? No, it wasn't him. Uh, uh, Hillary. Hillary Clinton. Well, they passed those papers back to Jeb Bush. And when he looked at them, I mean, how can you? His face, his expression was like priceless, man. Priceless. He was like, huh? Huh? <laughs> like, what? How can this happen to me? Well, it's coming, guys. It's coming. And they trying their very best to distract us all from this to distract us all from something that's going on throughout the world. I just I just found out not too long ago that Saudi Arabia already clean housed. They already clean house. It's one thing about Muslim law is that they don't waste no time, man. They find you guilty and they hang you and that's it. Bye. See ya. And some big names, man. Some big names from the Saudi family, from the kingship, were involved in some really, really nasty stuff, man. 
and they already clean house. We next. We next, and the thing is that there's some Latin countries in South America that are also helping our president Donald J. Trump in apprehending some of these pedophiles, some of these child abusers, some of these child traffickers throughout the world. And there's a lot of people, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people. There are talking. Yeah, they're cooperating. That's what they call it. They're cooperating. One name that might shock the crap out of you. Yeah, it's Jeffrey Epstein. Ah, don't look at me like that. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein. You think he dead? Come on, man. Are you kidding me? That man can't die. That man cannot die. There's not too many men that are willing to take secrets to the grave when those secrets can save their life. Because Epstein was about to face lethal injection. Okay? It was not, with Jeffrey Epstein was not just about sexual harassment or sexual assault. I'm telling you that because I know. I've done the research. I know. I know. And he just know too many people. Too many people that that if he tells, he can save his life. And son. That's a come, you know, I do not doubt that he's on his island right now. Surrounded with a whole bunch of FBI agents and God knows what else. Make sure he don't escape or they don't try to kill him. And I'm sure that he's giving lots and lots and lots names. I don't want to die, man. I don't want to die till I see this list. Till I see all of these people, all of these devils, all of these demonic animals. Because they can't, I can't call them human beings, man. I just can't. Anyone that's willing to hurt a child is an animal. It's a monster. And he doesn't deserve to live. I'm going to leave you with that. My name is Jens Yodani. Thank you once again for tuning in. I will live I will leave all the links down below. Leave your comments. Smash the like button, please. And share with your friends if you think that my videos are interesting. I love using God, Jesus. I love you because I just love you, man. That's just me. I have a lot of humanity in me. I have a lot of love in me. From you brothers and sisters out there that are watching my video right now. And I just wish we had a better world for my child, for our children, for your children, for my grandson, for your grandsons and granddaughters and a better future period, man. And I think that we are finally on the right track. I think we are. You know, the other day I happened to Here, some of the things that these, like Black Lives Matter and some some of some other groups and even politicians are actually supporting this. They are actually supporting defunding the police department throughout the country. Really? You want to defund the department that protects you and I? This is the latest thing in New York, Chicago, LA. This is the latest thing now. And the Democrats are all in with this, all in. So my question is, 
when you coming out of work on a winter night, because you got to remember in winter, well, at least in New York City, it gets dark by five o'clock. It's pitch black dark by five o'clock. And it's a Friday night and you walk into the cashier to cash your check if you don't have direct deposit. Right, and you cash your check and you come out and two dudes with masks on robs you. Not only rob you because you look so pretty and so sexy, they'll kidnap you or at least try. Who are you gonna call to defend you? Ghostbusters? I mean, I'm not trying to be funny here, but for crying out loud, man, what you guys are doing? What you guys are supporting out there, man? You really want that? You really want to live in the wild, wild west? Because they want to defund the police department. They want to take guns away from law abiding citizens. So what do you got left? What do you got left? I'll tell you what you got left. Criminals with guns up to the yin yang ready to do some damage. How are you going to defend by that? Oh, well, I'll just call my neighbor and my neighbor will defend me. <laughs> really? I don't think so. You're dreaming. As a matter of fact, it's not even a dream. It's a nightmare. And there's actually politicians going with this. And, and I'm telling you, maybe three months from now, they'll lie to their ass. They'll lie their ass off and tell their constituencies that, oh no, I didn't support that. But bullshit. Because there's video evidence. There's video evidence. Who's kneeling down at the Capitol for the police officers that has gotten gunned down? Murder in cold blood. Who, tell me who, is going down in one knee to support the cops, the police officers that give their life day in and day out for the citizens of this country? Who? Nobody, that's who. So why Pelosi and all of these so-called Democrats, but they're not Democrats. They radical socialists. That's what they are. Radical leftist socialists. There's no Democrat, Democratic Party no more, if you haven't noticed that. At least not the one you once knew. At least not the one I once knew. At least not the one your mother supported, my mother supported. No, no, no. Mm-mm. This is something totally different. And I want you guys to think about that for a minute. Better yet, think about that when November comes. My name is Jan Ciodani, and this is New York We Are Live. Till next time. Ciao.